What's up everybody? Hope you're doing good. Beautiful day. Thank you very much for stopping by. You are very appreciated. It's a beautiful day today. Um, most people are going away because it's a long weekend. Why is it a long weekend? Because today is Friday. So Saturday, nobody works. Sunday, nobody works. On so Monday, nobody's going to work because it's a public holiday. So it's a long weekend. People are from Thursday, some people, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. How oh, beautiful. Amazing, right? Many people are traveling, going many places. I'm also traveling tonight, so I'm excited. I will be in Kenya, most likely. Yeah, tonight I'll be in Kenya. Watch it out. Okay, thank you very much for stopping by. I appreciate you. This is your first time. Please click on the button, subscribe. We are one big family. I see you from all over the place. We are the same people. We love you. Let nobody lie to you, okay? So today we're going to watch something interesting. It's a speech by Guinea president. Here is Guinea map. For those of you who don't know, I know many of our brothers have never been to Africa and many don't quite understand the geography of Africa. So 54 countries, many, many countries in Africa. Guinea is one of them, okay? This is Guinea, beautiful country. Conakry is the capital. Please go visit. Beautiful women. No doubt about it if you're single. No, don't, don't go cheat. <laughs> okay, so... President of Guinea made a speech at the United Nations. He's still a young man, Mama Dindumbuya, born in 1980. That's still a young man, right? So he went to the United Nations to have a speech. And what I like about him, he did not mash his words. He said a lot of things that many people are very scared to speak about. Let's listen to him. The have multiplied in Africa in recent years because there are deep-rooted reasons for this. And to remedy the problem, ladies and gentlemen, we must look at these root causes. The putschist is not only the person who takes up arms to overthrow a regime. I want us all to be well aware of the fact that the real putschist, the most numerous and those who avoid any condemnation are also those who plot and scheme, who use trickery, who cheat to manipulate the text of the Constitution in order to stay in power eternally. It is those in white-collar jobs who change the rules of the game as the game unfolds in order to keep the reins of power in their hands. These are the most numerous kinds of putches. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, I am one of those who one day decided to shoulder our responsibility to prevent our country from slipping into complete chaos, into an insurrection. So Mamadou Dumbuye started by explaining the reason why there are coup d'etats in Africa, okay? Coup d'etat, obviously, is when a democratically elected president is toppled by people because they don't want him anymore. And this has been happening quite a bit in Africa for the past couple of years. Mamadou Dumbuye is not different because he came into power by force as well. Mamadou Dumbuye was born in March 1980. He's a Guinean military officer serving as interim president. He overthrew the president, Alpha Conde. Now, he's explaining why there are coup d'etats. It's very easy to say there are coup d'etats. Why is there coup d'etats? The reason why there are coup d'etats, he's saying, is because riches, wealth, is within the end of the elite. It's only one group of people that are withholding the riches, while the majority of the people are suffering. So he's telling the Western nation, don't come and tell us we're not democratic. Don't come and tell us we are putschist. Of course, we're going to putsch. If we're living in misery, with difficulties, there are no hospitals. There's just one specific group of people that are running the country. They have access to the funds, access to money, access to wealth. What do you expect from the people? We're not going to wait for another election that's going to be rigged anyway. We're going to topple them. There is no way you can explain that one specific group of people have money and everything in a country, while hospitals don't even have those machines where you keep babies. What do you call it? Those machines you keep babies so they don't pass. Those babies that are born prematurely, you know, what do you expect the people to do? We're going to kick them out by force. 
Africa, ladies and gentlemen, is suffering from a governance model that has been imposed on it. A model that is certainly good and effective for the West, which developed it over the course of its history, but which is difficult to incorporate and adapt to our realities, our customs, and our environment. Alas, I have to say that the graft did not take. I know that when I say this, many will immediately say to themselves, oh, another warmonger who wants to wring the neck of democracy, or another soldier who wants to impose his dictatorship. However, I want to say very clearly, without hypocrisy, without pretense, eye to eye, we're all aware that this democratic model that you have so insidiously, skillfully imposed on us after the La Bolle summit in France, something you've been imposing almost religiously, this model does not work. Various economic and social indices demonstrate this plain and clear. This is not a value judgment on democracy itself. Mamadou Doumbouya, I'll say it again. The model of governance you brought to us is not working. So he's questioning democracy. Democracy is not naturally African. No, it's not. Africans have had their own way of ruling, okay? That was okay. Democracy is not African. Democracy was brought to us by the Western nations. So it's basically like religion as well, you know, nothing against your religion, just saying, uh, well, how did African speak to God before religion came? So you mean to tell me that God never listened to Africans before religion came? So all the prayers of Africa were not listened to God. So non-African prayed and received whatever he wanted because there was no religion at the time. So what happened? That's exactly the point. Like many Africans today have lost their religion. Many Africans have lost their language. They can barely speak their own language, their mother tongue. They all speak English or French or Portuguese. Many Africans have lost even their names. Look at my name is Zach. It shouldn't be Zach. My African name is Bushika Mwekasa. That's my name. So many things were taken away from us. And he's saying, same for democracy. Democracy is not African. Democracy was brought to us by the West. Oh, let me push it further for you. Uh, cheating is not African. In Africa, they never used to be, oh, he's cheating on me. My husband is cheating. No. In Africa, generally, for many, many centuries, if a man has been with a woman for 12 years who is not the man woman, that's not cheating. That's just his other woman. Right? There's never been anything wrong with that. Trust me, that shocks you because you are born within the Western mentality. Jealousy that you feel is abnormal. Most of the strong men in Africa were not monogamous. I'm not preaching you to be polygamous. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that's another conversation for another day. I see you coming. All I'm saying to you is many things were imposed to us. The idea of feeling jealous of another woman, of another child coming from another woman, from your father, is not African. I grew up in an environment where there was one father with many mothers and many children. We were cousins, we were good friends, and those kids stayed together, lived together with no issue. It was never a problem. The mentality of it, the new mentality, and I'm not saying there was no, yes, there used to be monogamous Africans. Yes, polygamy used to exist, but it was never what you perceive as most detrimental, you know, cruel thing today. Ask yourself a question to know. Why do you feel this way about polygamy, but you have no issue with men wanting another man? Oh, you see, you have no issue with men and, you know, wanting another man, but you have issue with men with two women. Why? It's the same thing. It's all in the head. Why is this okay and that's not okay? It's the same thing. It's all in the head. So he says this model of democracy is not for us. You imposed us. This, I'm not saying you should be polygamous. Don't see you coming. Calm down. National leaders who have often been granted democratic labels... Hey. 
en fonction de leur docilité based on their acquiescence ou de leur aptitude or their capacity for selling off the resources and the property of their people encore de leur facilité or perhaps their ease in giving in to the pseudo recommendations and injunctions of the great powers talking to the waste He's saying the people that you are saying to be democratically elected, who are they? They are basically just people that obey you. Okay. They are in power, democratically elected, but the reality is they just obey you. They just loot the country for you guys. They negotiate with you. They let you steal minerals. They let you take things for free while you benefiting and the people of the country are suffering. I must confess in this regard that everything that I am facing goes beyond all imagination. These are the same people who profess democracy, transparency, who denounce poor governance and corruption, who dictate the rules. It is they who, behind the scenes, very discreetly and underhandedly, are increasing pressure to make us cede our national wealth through unconscionable Leonine contracts. He said, when you come to Africa, you make us sign contracts that are unacceptable, contracts that are one-sided, benefiting you while Africans are suffering. The Sahel is undergoing one of the most serious crises in its very long history. But it has the resources that are required to face it. Its legendary sense of diplomacy must be unleashed so that we can speak to each other without interference. It is for this reason that ECOWAS, whose vocation was economic, must stop getting involved in politics and favor dialogue. Mama Dudubuye said ECOWAS need to calm down. They need to discuss, have a talk, and not try and stop trying to be brutal. It's not going to work. Africa's population is young. It did not experience the Cold War. It did not experience the ideological wars that have shaped the world over the last 70 years. That is why. We, Africans, are insulted by the boxes, the categories, which sometimes place us under the influence of the Americans, sometimes under that of the British, sometimes the French, the Chinese, or the Russians, and even the Turks. We are neither pro nor anti-American. We are neither pro nor anti-Chinese, nor pro or anti-French, nor pro or anti-Russian, nor pro or anti-Turkish. We are simply pro-African. That is all. Mamadou Dubouya said again, the population of Africa is still very young. We were not born when the Cold War was on between Russia and America. So coming to us today and asking us to choose between Russia, China, Turkey, and the United States is an insult to us because we were not born when you guys were fighting with each other. Please respect us. It is important that in this prestigious and influential assembly, we understand clearly and definitively that the era of the old Africa is over. He says the old Africa is over. Forget about it. Forget the old. This is brand new. The old Africa where you dictated to us what to do is over. The time has come to realize that the structures, the rules from the post-war era, established in the absence of our states, which did not yet exist at the time, are obsolete. This is the end of of an unbalanced, an unjust era where we had no say in the matter. 
it is time to take our rights into our account and to let us take our proper place. But also, and above all, it is time to stop lecturing us and to stop treating us with condescension like children. He said it's time to realize that the structures of the World War II are over. Those things existed before we were born. It's over. Africa will not accept that anymore. It's time for us to take our right, to be respected, to stand tall and not to be spoken to like children. We're not children. We know what's good for us. We know what directions to take. No, we don't need you to feel sorry for us. We can decide for ourselves. We know who to choose between Russia and America. You don't have to choose for us. We know if we're angry or not. We know if we need grain from Ukraine or not. You don't have to decide for us. This is something brand new because many African countries and presidents have been very scared to speak this type of language. Seeing this man standing tall and expressing himself about the situation about Africa, asking for respect and making you understand democracy, you crying about democracy, saying all these coup d'etat are not democratic. It's normal that African people try to do that because when they are guided by leaders who are just looting, stealing and opening doors for you, People are going to stand up and they're going to be cool. Get along with the memo. Let me know how you feel about this. It's always a great pleasure to read from you. And let's have a discussion. God bless.